This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, happy Friday. This week we learned that the PC industry had an incredible quarter just now. We learned that regulators managed to stop two huge tech deals from actually happening. And also that Qualcomm is going to release a super interesting new chip. We also have a lightning round quiz this week where you only have one and a half minutes to answer 20 questions. That is linked down in the description and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my release highlights this week include the Huawei P50 Pro and P50 Pocket, and you should check out my Tech Altar video on them that I published earlier this week. Then there is the Redmi Note 11 lineup that just launched outside of China, which features four devices, all mid-range phones and all aggressively priced. And finally, we have the Pebble Pace Pro, and no, that has nothing to do with the Pebble of the past, it's just a random company using the same name in India. Weird. To see all of the new releases of the week, check out the release monitor in the crowd app, and that is linked down in the description. Okay, my first story of the week is going to be that it's earnings week. All the big tech companies are now releasing their earnings for the last quarter, and boy, oh boy, does it look incredible for the PC industry. Everyone, including Intel, is winning. With around 340 million units shipped in 2021, sales are almost back to the very peak of PC days. These are the best sales figures that we've had since 2012, Windows is now on 1.4 billion monthly active devices, and macOS as well as Chrome OS had great quarters too. Even Surface revenue was up 8%. With Windows 11 driving upgrades as well, Windows OEM revenue was up 25% in Q2 year on year, so it's enterprise, it's home, it's everything. Perhaps the most surprising news, at least to me, is that Intel, the company that everybody has kind of accepted as having lost their way lately, well, they just had one of their best years ever. Intel reported both its highest quarterly and its highest yearly revenue ever, and despite laptop chip shortages in particular, keeping them from increasing shipments, they just raised their prices instead. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, Intel's desktop and data center businesses were up, and CEO Pat Gelsinger said that, quote, Tiger Lake has shipped over 100 million units, making it the fastest ramping notebook chip series in our history, which is insane. Intel also announced this week that it is plunging 20 billion and actually up to 100 billion dollars into two new fabs in Ohio, with as many as eight new fabs being possible. And all of those expansion costs mean that Intel's gross margins are now down to just 55.4% from the earlier days of 60 plus percent. Another interesting PC story this week is that Rick Tsai, chief executive officer at MediaTek, when asked about making Windows chips, casually said that, quote, it's just going to be four years and beyond. We need some time and we don't have to rush, which kind of surprised me. Now, Windows on ARM has so far been a bit of a dumpster fire, so I don't think it is unreasonable for MediaTek to say, okay, we'll wait and see how this platform goes. But four years, that seems like a hell of a lot of time. Instead, MediaTek simply seems to be doing Chromebook chips until then, like its newly announced Companio 1380 chipset, for example. Okay, my second story of the week is going to be death by regulation, with two companies in particular being denied their dreams. First, Facebook's, or Meta's, DM project, its cryptocurrency initiative tied to the DM Association, is considering selling the intellectual property and finding a, quote, new home for the engineers who develop the technology. In other words, it's off. I made a video about this project back when it was still called Libra and looked like something that could maybe change the global finance world with the backing of Visa, Mastercard, Stripe, eBay, PayPal, and others. And even though Mark Zuckerberg defended Libra in front of Congress and changed the name to generate a fresh look in public, basically all of the other corporate partners abandoned the project pretty quickly, possibly due to the very real threat of regulatory scrutiny on the payment processors from the likes of the US Federal Reserve. As Matt Levine pointed out, other stablecoins like Tether that never asked for regulatory approval continue to exist in a sort of shadow world with a lack of transparency about their assets, yet billions of trades each day, but I suppose that wasn't really an option for a company as high profile as Facebook slash Meta. And second, regulators basically also got their way with Nvidia, who will likely walk away from its attempt to buy ARM, the chip design giant currently owned by SoftBank. The deal was first announced back in September 
November 2020, and it's been under scrutiny from the UK's antitrust watchdog, the US Federal Trade Commission, which sued Nvidia to block the purchase, the European Commission was investigating it, and Chinese approval was also required. So, with very few friends out there, it is no surprise that according to Bloomberg, Nvidia is now telling its partners that the acquisition will likely not close. SoftBank, meanwhile, is stepping up preparations for an ARM IPO as an alternative to the Nvidia takeover. So, regulators have managed to stop some big deals, but meanwhile, Microsoft, Alphabet, and Amazon all announced more acquisitions in 2021 than any other year in the past decade, likely to close a bunch of deals before the FTC really finds the courage to step in even more in the future. Okay, and my third story this week is going to be the very weird and unexpected Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus. So I saw the Lenovo Halo and the Motorola Frontier get leaked this week, weirdly like half a year in advance. But what actually makes both of these leaks super interesting is that both will launch with the upcoming 8th Gen 1 Plus chip. Now, Plus versions of previous Snapdragon chips were kind of boring, right? Like they were just little clock speed bumps, for example. But this year, things look a lot more interesting. That's because rumors suggest that Qualcomm apparently isn't very happy with Samsung's yields on the regular 8th Gen 1, and that Samsung is apparently also not capable of producing all the quantity that Qualcomm was after. So for the Plus this year, Qualcomm is expected to switch to TSMC's 4 nanometer process, which is expected to be better than Samsung's equivalent, and it is the same process that MediaTek's Dimensity 9000 is also made with. By the way, this has happened at least once before in phone history, when the Apple A9 chip in the iPhone 6S was made by both TSMC and Samsung, and back then, again, TSMC's was better. But this new processor generation will likely be the first high-profile case since then, where we as consumers will get a somewhat clear apples-to-apples -apples comparison between the two fabs to see which one is actually better and by how much. I can't help but think that Samsung could have done so much better and kept up with the competition if only they sent a couple of their engineers to take classes on Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant is the interactive online learning platform for science, computer science, and more. And man oh man, if you have a New Year's resolution of investing in yourself this year, either to just keep your wit sharp or to actually get better at your actual work or school, they are the place to do just that. Their interactive courses will help you level up your STEM skills in a really fun and effective way, and I particularly love their newly reworked computer science classes that go from explaining how exactly a computer makes its most simple decisions, all the way up to complex algorithms, machine learning, and more. If you want to level up your skills in this area, they have a great path from beginner to advanced, and they also cover a lot of other fun science topics outside of computers as well. Brilliant is built from the ground up to be interactive, with lessons having exercises attached to them right away so you can learn by doing. It is a much more effective and enjoyable learning process than just reading a book or watching a lecture passively. And the first 200 people who sign up using brilliant.org slash TFC will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.